another good area for putting gear into. On my other side here, we have the controller for the hot water unit. This, this model here has two water tanks, so the two water tank level indicators, a push button, hold them in, and you can see how much water is in the tank. On models that do have two water tanks, you have an isolator between the tanks. These VAP valves back here, turn one on, turn the other one off until your tanks are empty, then vice versa. When both tanks run out, you do have a water isolator switch back here. This turns off the pump. Each side of the bed, you do have a 12 volt outlet, one here, one on my other side, plugging in small accessories. Over the back there, there is the SeaTech 12 volt battery charger. When you plug into 240, this automatically, because it's hardwired, will charge up your batteries without any care. When you do plug into 240, you do have power out here at the outlet. Down below it is a 12 volt solar controller. For more information on the solar controller, refer to your instruction manual. Beside me here is your 150 watt pure sine wave inverter. Great for charging, say, a laptop or your mobile phone batteries. Please note though, it is only 150 watt, so appliances such as hair dryers and toasters draw too much current for this little unit. Refer to your appliance, the specs on it, see how much wattage it draws before you plug it in. Over here is the switch for the LED light above me. And we also have this little light here which swivels around. It's great for finding gear in the dark. Above here, queen size mattress. All the Odysseys are fitted with a queen size bed. You have the option of either the inner sprung or the foam mattress. Great for at night when you want to read a book in bed. Now, these little reading lights either side of the, uh, the mattress. Turn them on and off though. They have got a little red light that sits in the middle. Just give that a touch and it'll turn it on. Okay, to put up the big awning, it's a good idea to have your poles, your ropes and your pegs ready. And the first thing you do is lower the main roof here. You do that on the inside. There's a button on the right and the left of the poles. Pop those in and push it down. Next, we need to attach the awning onto the main camper. And you do that, one person zips it on while the other person holds the weight of the canvas. Okay, pop the roof up from the inside again. And now you're ready to put the centre pole in first. You will need the nine foot spreader pole. Okay, now you can extend your pole. The gable goes about six inches above a normal person's head. Tighten up your rope and move on to the next pole and spreader bar. Spread above. Attach your rope. Okay, with this pole down, we move to the front. Got your uh, spread above.
making your last pole on the end here. Okay, now this one's up. You move to this one here. And then back down this end. Okay, now you have your ropes and your poles in position. It's a good idea now to even up the canvas and tighten the ropes appropriately. If you need more information on this, you can refer back to the instruction manual. It's a much more detailed diagram of where the ropes and the poles should go. You'll notice here that the awning roof is on a downward tilt. That is on purpose, so you don't get the pooling of water in the roof up here, which is important. Okay, we'll now show you in detail the spreader bar and how to put that up. So first of all, up in the top section of the camp up there, you lock it into position. Grab your pole. Put it through the eye of the spreader bar. And then through the eyelet of the awning roof and your peg on. And note here where you extend the spreader bar. This is in detail how to put the hood bow down. Press in your clips on the left hand side and then on the right. Lower the roof. Right down and you're ready to put the main awning on. Now to fold the camper up with the overnight awning in place, first of all you need to pull the mattress forward but no further than the, the uh, middle hood bow. And then put your pillows and your doona towards the other end of the bed, towards the rear. Fold up the bed lights onto the bed and also do up all your windows but have your doors open. Don't forget to lower the jockey wheel. Once this is done, you're ready to take the two front awning poles out. As I mentioned earlier, the reason you lower the jockey wheel, it takes the weight off the rear feet so it's actually easier to fold the camper. Okay, now you just need to velcro the overnight awning up just on the flat there. Fold the front awning up, undoing your bungee cords here, tucking that into the body of the camper with the front awning. Grab your poles, pop them in the front, that's where they stay. Okay, now you just need to go along and tuck the canvas in the body. Be careful with this Velcro strip here. And you just have one person on each side. And just pull on the canvas as you go. Once all the canvas is in, just give the camper a squeeze down to let all the air out. Just double check that all the canvas is in the body of the camper. Put your rear latches down first. And now you're ready to do your front latches. And next is the rear spare. 